Life is 90% mental. I've come to realize that probably when I hit my 30s. I had some inkling about this thought earlier, uh, but now that I've kind of hit my 30s, I fully understand that it's all mental. Uh, It's your ability to process stress, uh, adversity, obstacles, challenges. It's your ability to cope, coping mechanisms. You'd be a fool to think that I don't have struggles. I don't have lazy moments. I don't have moments where I wake up 4.30 in the morning and go, screw this shit, man. I just want to sit in bed here and lie down and sleep. I've only had four and a half hours sleep. I can't be screwed going over to the damn garage and squatting something that is going to be far away from anything exciting, just putting in empty work. But I get up and I tell myself, shut up, shut up, put up with being uh, uncomfortable. Discomfort is something that is absolutely required for you to get ahead. You need to be uncomfortable. You need to be, you need to develop the ability to just take it. Take it. Simple as that. Take feeling crap. What do children, why do children cry and carry on all the time? The moment they don't get something they want, they cry. So adults that have kind of developed into full men, or women, and they don't get something that goes their way, they just cry about it. How do we cry? Ah, oh, screw it. I'm going to go to the gym. Ah, oh, screw it. Give me another bowl of ice cream so I can down that. Screw it. I have this. Oh, screw it. My femurs are too long. Oh, screw it. My hands are too small. I can't hook grip. Screw it. That's crying. You're crying. Like a little bitch. You're just crying. Kids cry and you whinge. We don't care. Nobody cares. I told you. What I think about in moments living up to a PR, I think about my tombstone. I think about my gravestone. I think about how no one gives a shit. Life is going. Time is ticking. It's up to you whether you're going to do something about it or not. That's fine. You go into your corner and have a tanty. Have a tanty all day long. Every single day, every time somebody pisses you off, oh, my wife pissed me off, or the dog is barking all night, I can't sleep. I'm not going to go to the gym because those are the reasons I don't feel good. No one gives a shit, okay? No one gives a crap. You think you're the only one that has mental troubles or or obstacles in life or adversity that you have to deal with? You think you're the only one. What do you think separates the people that are successful, people that are getting ahead in whatever field we're talking about here? We're talking about Olympic weightlifting or weightlifting, powerlifting, Olympic lifting, whatever you want to call it, bodybuilding. We're talking about that. But you think you're... So what do you think successful people... Well, what do you think the secret ingredient is? They, don't, they just do it, man. Whether they feel shit, sad, happy, excited, not excited, over it, they get in there and they put in the work. And guess what? After 365 days, that is a shit ton of time that has passed. You've just done meaningless work, you might think. But biology is ticking along. Tick, tock, tick, tock, tick, tock. It's ticking along. Adaptations are being created every single second. Whether you're loading 50%, 2%, or 100% of your one rep max, It is better than adapting to the damn couch. Because when you're sitting on the couch for 24 hours watching Netflix, what do you think your biology is doing? We need to adapt to this damn couch. Okay, that's what this guy is telling us to do right now. Just get over it, man. Get over it. You're going to feel sad. You're going to feel shit. You're going to feel like, screw this. I can't be be, be asked doing this. I have these moments exactly like you, except I have a cascade of thoughts that I've inbuilt into my psyche that I basically automatically go in. It's like an emergency procedure in my head. Every time I get out of bed and something's off or I feel crap, I just go into this cascade of thoughts and it's all of a sudden I'm like, man, you sad sack of piece of shit. Why don't you pick your crap together and head over to the gym and do some work. And what are those thoughts? I've spoken about this many, many times. I've, I've just said the gravestone, the tombstone. I've said World War II, World War I, trenches, warfare, no man's land, machine gunners mowing people down, hunger, Auschwitz, Slaughters, left, right, and center. Talk about the ancient world. People building pyramids with no food. People dying on the damn pyramids. Taking those boulders up. Just name it. Every single part of human history is trash. Suffering, pain, agony, blood, guts. That's what, that's what human history is. Just We celebrate whoever's killed more people. Just think about it. We celebrate these great conquerors. What do conquerors do? They're not nice people, man. They invade other people's land and then rape and pillage and take over and murder and try and impose their will onto other people. That's what conquerors are. 
It's just pure pain and agony. And, and this life, this world celebrates these people. Right now, Africa is, is starving, right? Many, many parts of the world are starving. While there's trillionaires bloody building Ferraris and Lamborghinis and Austin Martins in, in pure silver, pure gold. So this bloke is, 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 is driving pure gold and some, guy, some kid over there is dying of hunger. That's what we celebrate and no one gives a shit. So no one gives a shit about your plight, about your, oh, I've woke up and my back is sore. No one cares, man. If, if you don't care, no one else will care. So if you don't drag your ass to the gym, no one else is going to care. People don't care about kids dying in Africa, man. And you reckon somebody cares about your little thing. If you want damn results, you're going to have to just pick your shit up and go after it. Simple as that. It's simple as that, man. By far, most of my workouts are suboptimal, man. Very rarely do I come in and I'm like, God damn, I feel really strong. Like the other day, I hit 260. Just walked in, I'm like, my God, I feel like a silverback around here. I feel like I'm going to rip this damn bar in half. How many times did that happen? does that happen? Freaking rarely. And do I know how to repeat that same thing? What did I eat? What time did I wake up? How much water did I drink? What did my wife say? What did my kids say? What happened in the day? Can I replicate that? Hell no, man. Shouldn't even bother trying to replicate that. You just go about your business and when you're blessed, you're blessed. You take it and you run. But this idea that, oh, I'm going to only train when it's, when it's optimal. Oh, science, science. Get the hell out of here, science, man. How, how the hell is science ever going to explain one billion points or variation in somebody's life? One billion points. You're going to tell me somebody's going to conduct a study where every single variable is being accounted for. And so then at the end, we have a discussion. We have, we have a result. We're like, yes, that's what we're going to do. Shit doesn't exist, man. You just have to learn that all of this shit is mental. 90% is mental. Your ability to cope to life, and life is shit, as I've said. Our 21st century life is a freaking walk in the park compared to what human, humans have put up with in the past. So if you don't have the mental capacity to deal with 21st century, especially in the first world, most, of these, m m most people that are kind of watching this video are probably in, in, in well enough countries, although probably even third world countries now have phones and, and whatnot. But the, the majority are probably sitting on a couch or, or air conditioned room or at work or something along those scenarios. You're telling me you can't deal with your, your plight. I get it. It's tough, man. I'm not saying that your, your, your struggle is not tough. It is tough. I'm telling you, it is tough. You just have to learn how to grow that damn skin so you can cope with it. I have developed certain, like I said, a cascade of thoughts run through my mind. Usually it starts and ends with damn death. Okay, that, that's me. You can, you can think of a really painful moment in your life where you got bullied at school and you got your ass bloodied and you got embarrassed in front of 30 girls and, and everyone's laughing at you. You can think of that moment. If, if that makes you tick and angry and whatever and get out and freaking run through a brick wall on the way to a damn garage and rip every single plate on the ground, rip it off the ground. If that's what gets you going, do it, man. Whatever the coping mechanism is. People talk about psychology. Oh, I need to go to see a psychologist to develop a coping mechanism and thoughts. Fine, do that. I've just kind of learned on my way. You know, I've, I've been knocked down in my life. Plenty of times. I've been scared shitless plenty of times. I've, I've been sad. I've cried. I've done all these things, emotions. And each time I'm like, okay, well, this is shit. This is freaking shit. And then my kid gets born. I meet my wife. The second kid gets born. These are the happy moments. And I'm like, all right, okay. So I'm, I'm blessed because I'm having these moments. It's up and down. It's just the way it is, man. So you can't, you can't be all happy and celebrating when it's up. And, you can't, and, then, and then cry and whinge about when it's down. It's just all part of the package, man. You're going to be happy. You're going to be sad. That's it. Just don't whinge about it. Just go on, go on with it. If you care about this weight, lift the thing. If you care about a deadlift, 300 kilo deadlift, 300 squat, there's no time for whinges, man. These dudes who are, who are performing at the elite level, man, either they have tough skin and ment mental savages. I've spoken about this in the past. Half of these NBA dudes are off the damn street. They, they, they play basketball with sugar water, right? They didn't have a, a fat freaking bacon sandwich, egg and bacon sandwich. They fucking, you know, they, they, they had sugar water and then they went off and played. So they played basketball, they played football, NFL, they played all these different sports to survive, okay? A mate of mine was telling me the other day, Maradona story, he saw a documentary, a long-ass documentary about Maradona. At the age of like 12, 13, he was basically feeding his whole family through football. He got scouted, he went to some professional local club, and he was basically playing in the club as a 13 or 14-year-old, I can't remember what the age, it was like early teens. He was feeding his family. So you're telling me you're going to go strip Maradona off the ball? And he's going to be like, oh, well, no worries. I'll, I'll get, nah, man. 
I ain't getting that ball next time. That ball is mine. I'm going to hunt you down because my mom is waiting for freaking food. We need to buy flour, but we need to make some freaking bread. You're taking my bread off the table by you stealing this ball. I'm going to come and rip your jugglers out of your skull, man. That's what I want to do. So this is the hunger that people are talking about. This is the mental side. So if you're going to a 50-50 ball against Maradona and you're like, oh, I just want to injure myself. I don't want to overstretch myself. And this guy's like frothing at the mouth, saliva flying everywhere, running at the ball. Who do you reckon is going to get the damn ball? The hungry guy or the little pussy that's just come out of a freaking Lamborghini? No, man, the hungry people win. The people that have no time to whinge. They are the ones that win. That's how it is, man, hunger. And I'm not saying go starve yourself and your family for the next three months so you can get a 300 kilo deadlift. I'm not saying that. But you can process some of these thoughts in your mind and prepare yourself to have that same hunger, to understand your position in the universe, on the planet, and to understand what this is. And once you zoom out enough and you, you see you're just a piece of dust, you're just basically fertilizer waiting to be you know, put into the earth. That's what we really are. Salt moves on. That's my belief. But... That's all you really are, man. Get on with it, man. You have no time. You have no time. Time is ticking. But this idea that Ivan is just something else, man. He just gets on with it all the time. Dude, I have shit days all the time like you. Don't get it twisted, man. I have shit days all the time. It's just I tell myself, shut the hell up, man. Shut up. Get on with it. And that's it. And once I get out of the damn gym, I'm like, respect, man. And then I feel amazing. But that little voice that talks to you in the morning and whenever you're on the couch or whatever, <clears throat> man, I want to bash that dude up, man. I just can't get my hands on him. I've been telling him to shut the hell up for years now. And he's pissing me off. But I, I talk to him every single day. Not every single day. I have days where the, the guy doesn't show up. You know, but some days he, he comes around and he starts talking shit. And that pisses me off. Anyway, we can't get a hold of this dude, this willpower, negative thought, whatever the hell the voice is. Uh, you just have to kind of talk to him and, and develop a strategy to deal with that voice. We all have it, man. We all have it. And if you let that guy win, then you're just being a little pussy, man. Uh, that's the way it is. That's why I look at it. If you are physically able to walk, you can then squat. I don't care if it's the barbell or if it's two tons. Do something. I said yesterday's video, it's about effort. I don't care about weight. I don't care about that. Effort. How much effort are you putting in today? That's it, man. That's all this whole thing is. That's what success is, man. That's what Kobe, Jordan, all these dudes are. You read about all these dudes and basically they're all mentally unwell. You know, that, that's what the documentary will say. Oh, Kobe Bryant woke up at four o'clock in the morning, went and ran 30 marathons and a worker rocked up to the Lakers uh, training session, like was dunking on Shaq and all these dudes and was like killing everyone. And then went home, had some food, came back, opened the gym up himself and put up a million shots. And then rocked up and smashed Sacramento Kings and killed everyone. That's what he is. Who does that? Who does that, man? You reckon he was comfortable the entire time? He was like, oh, this is a beautiful life. I love running suicides. I love lifting weights until it burns. It's just a beautiful feeling. No, man. He's just like, all right, this life is going to be uncomfortable. I'm going to put up with this because I want results. I want to get somewhere. That's all it is. Whoever can cope with more pain and more discomfort will be more successful. I'll catch you later. Peace out.